Welcome to the Trend Micro Deep Security 10 for Administrators video series. This collection of videos provides an overview of tasks that may be required as part of your work as an administrator in Deep Security Manager. The Deep Security Anti-Malware Protection Module protects servers against malware by scanning the system on a regular basis looking for evidence of malware infection. Another method of protecting servers from malware is to prevent these devices from accessing websites that have the potential for distributing malware. In this video lesson, we will enable and configure the Web Reputation Protection Module to protect servers by blocking access to malicious URLs. Deep Security uses databases from the Trend Micro Smart Protection Network to check the reputation of websites that are being accessed. The databases used include references to sites collected from a variety of sources, including URLs collected from malware analysis. Sites in the database are classified and assigned credibility scores that reflect their potential for either becoming infecting computers or their involvement in a malware or spyware lifecycle. Trend Micro products with Web Threat Protection enabled use these credibility scores to regulate access to the sites. The website reputation score is correlated with the specific web reputation policy enforced on the computer. Depending on the security level being enforced, Deep Security will either block or allow access to the URL. The reputation score for the website will be verified any time a URL is accessed, whether it be from a web browser on the protected server or as part of an application call from within an application. The Trend Micro Smart Protection Network or the local smart protection server will return a credibility score as follows. A score between 81 and 100 is considered to be safe as there are no known or potential threats associated with this website. In this case, the security level will be set to high, meaning we're only going to allow access to websites with a high credibility. A score of 51 to 80 indicates that there is a possible phishing page or a potential source of malware or spyware. This site has also been associated with spam or has a history of being compromised. In this case, the security level will be set to medium. Sites with a score between 0 and 50 are considered to be dangerous. These websites have been verified to be a phishing page or a source of malware or spyware. A score of 50 or below is considered as known malicious. In this case, the security threshold will be set to low. And finally, pages that have not yet been tested by Trend Micro will have a score of 71. It is possible to block or allow pages based on this score. Let's go into the Deep Security Manager web console and look at how we can enable web reputation in a policy or on a computer. I've logged into the Deep Security Manager web console as the administrator. Click on the Policies menu, and in the list of policies, we have a policy called Classroom that we will use to assign the web reputation protection. Double click on the policy to open up the details, and in the left hand frame, click Web Reputation. Currently, the web reputation state is disabled set to off and this is inherited from the base policy which in this case is called base. I'm going to enable web reputation protection and I also am going to set the security level. So notice the security level is also inherited from the parent policy so I'm going to disable inherited and I'm going to leave the medium level enabled. So we have a high level, medium, and low. And we also have the option to block pages that have not been tested by Trend Micro. So these are the pages that have a score of 71. So I'm going to click Save. This is updating the classroom policy. And any machines that make use of the classroom policy are also going to be updated. 
and if they do not yet have the web reputation protection module installed, the necessary components will be put in place. On the exceptions tab, you can indicate pages that are going to be allowed or blocked regardless of the rating. For example, if you have a certain collection of pages that you would like your protected servers to be able to access regardless of the rating, you can click and type in the URL and then add it to the allowed list. If there are pages that you would like to block regardless of the rating, click and enter the URL and click to add it into the blocked list. Note that you can block URLs from the domain, block a specific URL, or block URLs containing a keyword. For example, if you do not want anyone to be accessing an online gambling site from your protected server, you could block URLs that contain the keyword poker. The Smart Protection tab allows you to identify the source for the web reputation scores. By default, our value is inherited from the base policy, and in this case, we're connecting directly to the Smart Protection service that's available through the Smart Protection Network. If you've configured a local Smart Protection server, for example, to be used by air-gapped machines that don't have connectivity to the internet, you could click and identify the details of your Smart Protection server. We're going to maintain the connection to the global smart protection service for this example. On the advanced tab, you can identify the page that's going to be provided to allow users to dispute a block page. You can select whether you'd like alerts to be generated as well as ports that are going to be monitored. The web reputation events tab details information about websites that are allowed or blocked based on the policy settings that are enabled. Click close to close the policy details. And you'll note that we have a computer called VM-DSR which is currently using the classroom policy to which we assign the web reputation protection. I'm going to go to events and reports and go to system events and if we note here, we have an event related to the policy being sent. In this case, the VM DSR computer received the policy with the changes for the web reputation protection. I've switched over to the Windows 7 computer, which is currently using the classroom policy. Let's open up the browser and attempt to access some different websites. Trend Micro maintains a collection of URLs that can be used for testing the web reputation protection. For example, if I type in the URL of wrs81.winshipway.com, this page has been assigned a score of 81 and is deemed to be safe and the web page is allowed. If I type in the URL of wrs71.winshipway.com, this page has a score of 71, which means it's untested. And because we did not block untested pages in our policy, the page is allowed. If I type in the score of a page that should be blocked, for example, wrs31.winshipway, you will get the block message telling the user at the computer that the administrator has blocked this page. If you double click on the notifier icon in the system tray and click on view events, web reputation events, you'll be able to see there is a list of blocked websites. So these are web pages that we have accessed that have been blocked. Let's go back to the Deep Security Manager web console and take a look at the events from there. So I'm back in the Deep Security Manager web console in this case, we use the VM-DSR computer. Double click on the computer to bring up the details. Click the Web Reputation Protection module in the left-hand frame. And under Web Reputation Events, you'll notice that there are a bunch of events related to 
web reputation. Click Get Events to refresh the display. This triggers the heartbeat for the agent to send copies of its event information. And if you double click on one of the entries, it'll bring up the details. So in this case, someone attempted to access WRS 31.WinshipWay. This page is classified as dangerous. And because of the policy that we have indicated, the page is blocked. If you do require access to this page for some reason, notice that on the event details, there is an option to add to allowed list. Or from the list, you can right mouse click on the event and add to allowed list. And this automatically adds the website to the allowed list, meaning you will have access to this website regardless of the score. There is also an option for caching the scores that are retrieved from the Smart Protection Network. If you go into the policy details, under settings, advanced, you'll notice that there is a cache lifetime which is set to 30 minutes. When the deep security agent retrieves a score from the Smart Protection Network, the URL and the score are cached. If you return to the website within 30 minutes, the cached value will be used instead of contacting the Smart Protection Network. If it's been more than 30 minutes, we will ignore the cached rating and contact the Smart Protection Network to retrieve the value. When we start the analysis of the URL, the first item we're going to check is to see if the URL exists on the allowed list. If the URL that you're trying to access is on the allowed list, we are going to allow you to view the details of that site regardless of their credibility score. So we're going to allow the site immediately. If it's not on the allowed list, then we're going to check to see if the URL is on the blocked list. Because if it's on the blocked list, we're going to block that site regardless of the rating. If it's not on the blocked list, then we're going to check to see if we have a rating for that website in the cache. And if there is a rating in the cache, we will use that rating. We'll then check that against the policy and either allow or block the page. And finally, if there's no rating in the cache, then we're going to contact the Smart Protection Network or the local Smart Protection Server to retrieve the credibility score then we're going to evaluate it against the policy setting and the page will either be displayed or blocked. The web reputation protection can be assigned through a policy but can also be assigned directly to a computer. Click on the computers menu and from the list double click on one of the machines, click on the web reputation protection module, and you'll notice here the configuration is currently set to off and that's the default value for the machine. Let's turn the web reputation protection on and let's select the security level as medium. Click save and close and you'll notice in the computer list the task is listed as sending policy. So the policy details are being sent to the deep security agent on the client to computer. And since this is the first time that the web reputation protection has been enabled on this computer, the necessary components for the protection module are being installed. The task column has cleared, which means the security is now in place. And let's go to the client to computer and try to access some websites. I'm now on the client to computer. Let's bring up the browser and let's type in the URLs of some websites. So let's use the same testing websites. So wrs81.winshipway. This site has a score of 81. It should be allowed. Let's try 71, which means the page is not tested. It's allowed. 
And let's try the score of a website that should be blocked, for example, wrs31.winshipway. And this page is blocked, and you'll notice the notifier pops up a message. Back in the Deep Security Manager web console, let's double click on the Client 2 computer to bring up the details. Click on the Web Reputation Protection module, and under Web Reputation Events, we're going to click Get Events to trigger the heartbeat, and we should see some events related to the website being blocked. Double click to bring up the details, and you'll notice here that the wrs31.winshipway.com URL was blocked because it's dangerous, and if we wanted to, we could add this to the allowed list. Thank you for viewing this video in the Trend Micro Deep Security 10 for Administrators video series.